Hi everyone, welcome to today's makeup tutorial. So I've opted for something that was meant to be autumnal but actually I ended up going really colourful. So to start I'm going to use this uh, e.l.f. concealer on my eyes. This isn't an eye primer but for me this is my go-to for when I'm doing really super colourful looks. I'm also going to be using good old Salotape today just so I can get a really crisp line on the edges of my eyeshadow. And what I'm also doing is curling part at the front part of the Salotape so that it catches is any fallout. So I'm taking these two dark red shades from the Tahiti uh, Carnival palette from Be Perfect. It looks more pink on camera which is super super annoying because it did look more like a raspberry red um, in person but generally if you don't have too much shadow packed onto your brush it will come off more pink than it will red. So to fluff that out, I'm taking a mixture of this sort of rosy pink and sort of like this caramel colour. I don't have the palette to hand, I really am so sorry. Um, but I'll list all the shades in the description. And I'm using this to fluff out the original shades that we were using, just so that it mutes them down a little bit more. Um, and makes it a bit more impactful. So I'm taking a darker brown, but I'm also mixing it with the black shade and sort of just putting or layering these colors on top of each other so that it turns into like a really dark, um, sultry, raspberry red pink. I'm getting really descriptive with these names. Um, but I'm building this up and also placing the original red shade that we used over the lid just so that our look looks a bit more vampy than usual. Now I am going into another palette, this is the Zoeva Coco Blend palette which is my favourite palette of all time. I'm taking this pink shimmery shade here and to be fair this was the wrong brush to use with it. I, I should have used my fingers because it's the best way to pick these types of shadows up but I did have nails on and I just didn't want to risk scraping any of the pans. I'm then taking a mixture of those two more foiled shimmery shades from the carnival palette and placing this over the top and the same thing applies i wish i'd used my fingers uh, to place this shadow onto my eyes but i thought it worked as a really nice soft uh, duo chrome overlay on top of the original shadow i haven't taken my sellotape off yet just because it's really helpful when doing your liner especially if you want a really crisp liner and i'm just using this double-ended one from makeup revolution and my favorite part to this look is taking off the sellotape. Wow. So I'm placing, I forgot what I was going to say, I'm placing um, the original red shades that we used just on my waterline. And then later what I do is with the coal pencil that I'm using, which is from Laura Mercier, um, I'm going to be lining my waterline and then the upper part of my eye, which I think is called your tight line, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but what you'll see is I'm being really messy with the, the bottom waterline just because it helps to, especially if you're going for like a really dark vampy look, it really helps with making the look more smoky and really sort of bold with the colour. Um, so you'll see here that I'm stamping whatever bled onto my sort of eyelid um, or my lower eye part that's being stamped in and makes it look super vampy. Uh, mascara, and then I'm also going in with lashes which are from the Be Perfect uh, Tahiti Carnival line. And then I've just recently got this foil from Lottie London. It is so, so good. They're kind of like, is it Space Cowboy from Urban Decay? It's like that, but just so much more easier to use. So I'm going in with my base, um, I'm using the vitamin C from Boots as my moisturiser, this is so so good, Too Faced Born This Way foundation, I'm new to this, I'm not somebody who hops on the bandwagon and buys products straight away, I give it time just to let the dust settle and to see whether something's really worth it, and for me this foundation is incredible. Uh, the coverage, it looks so natural, it's not too too matte, it's, it is just like the perfect uh, foundation. So if you don't have this, I would absolutely go ahead and purchase this. Maybelline Erase Me Concealer, a goodie, um, an oldie but a goodie. Love this, uh, love this concealer, it is so so good, so full coverage and so affordable as well.
Okay, so another product for me that is new is the NARS Laguna Liquid Bronzer. This is incredible. I am such a big fan of cream and liquid bronzers. Never thought I would be, um, but this is probably on par with the, is it Chanel Tan du Soleil? I think the one in like the round, really like Instagrammable packaging. Um, this is great. It works so well. It blends so effortlessly into your face products and it looks natural and doesn't look powdery either. But also something new to me, uh, there's quite a few new products in here actually. The Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. This is great. Oh my goodness, I thought this was like a fluke product. I didn't think this was going to work. Um, I take this mainly underneath my eyes but also powder sort of my t-zone area because I don't actually use face powder anymore that I have no need for it and my face still looks you know great at the end of the day in terms of how the products wear um, and then also something brand new to me is from Natasha Denona this is the Diamond and Glow palette and as you can see I'm super excited to use this it's probably the only rose gold um, blush that I've used that actually comes up with pigmentation and I've had to switch brush because I was getting a bit sort of I don't know I didn't like how the pan was getting dirty so I've just switched up brushes and I found that actually it applied better now the only thing with this personally is the highlight is it's not as softly fused as I would like so I love something that's really muted softly fused I don't like really intense highlights like what this is and it does have a bit more of a sort of a glitter element to it I guess so for me I had to use another brush just to merge this with the rest of the face products um, but generally you know this this looks so so beautiful on the skin and as long as you give it sort of good 10-20 minutes for it to sink into the skin or to use a setting spray this comes up really beautifully so for lips now, I'm just taking this eye, I was going to say eyeliner, it's actually a lip pencil. I believe it's from e.l.f. Um, again, I'll list it down below because I don't have the products to hand, but this is super, super matte. Um, so I absolutely wanted to go for something more creamy and buttery today. So I'm just lining my lips with this, I'm filling them in and then using MAC Creme Day Nude. It is my favourite nude in the whole world. I will repurchase this for as long as it is available. And I always have to have a backup of this as well. Myth is another one that I love too. Um, I'm also using this NYX Butter Gloss just in the middle of my lips just to make them look um, not as dry as what they are in real life. Um, then I'm lastly finishing off this look with the Wet n Wild Natural Finish uh, Face Spray. This stings, like if you get this in your eyes, it stings. So if you're purchasing that, just be careful. But other than that, it's great. So thank you so much for watching this video today. This is what it ended up looking like and it was so beautiful in person. Please visit my Instagram page, which is Inertia of Beauty, to see this look up and close and personal. And thank you so much for watching.